future sound designers, this is Tutorial Joe. I am here to show you the very basics of QLab, specifically QLab version 2. I'm hoping by the end of this very short tutorial that you will feel confident to go in and do some basic show control with, uh, at your theatrical production with this program. There are a couple different ways that you can bring audio cues into your workspace here. The easiest way is to just find the file in Finder, click it, and drag it in. There you go. And it's ready to go. The other thing you can do is click on it here and drag it in, which will bring a blank cue. That red X means that it's not pointing to any kind of file. Or you can hit Command-2, command which will bring up one also, and then bring in your uh, file and drop it onto it. Notice that when it's highlighted in blue like that, that's when it's going to replace that audio cue. Now, why would you do that when you could just drag it in? Well, maybe you don't have the file yet, but you want to put a placeholder cue or something like that. So now I'm going to delete uh, cue two and three. I'm going to do that by hitting Command Delete. That will delete the highlighted cues. Uh, Let's look at the audio cue in a little more detail. The two most important tabs here down in the, uh, I believe this is the toolbox. Nope, that's the toolbox, the inspector. So if you don't see that on QLab, that's because you need to hit inspector and that'll show up. Settings. The biggest thing is you have the, uh, the waveform right here and you can click at the beginning to set where it starts and you can click at the end to pick where it ends. Very simple. The other thing you can do is click in the middle and that yellow bit shows where the playback is going to start for this time. Like if you just wanted to test out one part of the cue but you didn't want to actually change the playback position, you would pick in there or you could highlight somewhere and that's what that yellow means. The last thing you can do here is you can have it repeat more than once by changing that number to greater than one, or you can hit infinite loop. Now when you do that, this is going to turn green. Everything in the green is going to repeat. Uh, so you can click and try to drag. Now what that's going to do usually is, is change the starting point. But say we just wanted it to start here, and then when it gets to the end, it comes back to here and repeats. That's what that means. We can click the green and move it around to repeat wherever. We could move the end. Whoops. That's the one problem with QLab. It's a little hard to move these things around. And move it wherever you want. Good. The other important tab is levels, for obvious reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and play the cue by hitting spacebar. I'm going to... You have to select it again. All right, so here you can see this. Bring it down, it gets quieter. Bring it up, it gets louder. You can also click on it and put in a number. It automatically goes negative because in sound, uh, zero is as loud as you want to get, and everything below that is negative, obviously. Uh, these are the individual channels, which you don't really need to mess with unless you uh, are trying to make it come out of one speaker or the other. And... These correspond basically to the left and right speakers if you're just working with a basic stereo setup. This over here, the cross points, you don't need to worry about too much. This is just telling you uh, basically these are left and right to keep a stereo image. So don't worry about that. Info is a somewhat important thing. The biggest deal is armed here, which is what the default is. Uh, when you disarm it, you see it looks like this and it won't play even if you hit go. So, so yeah, I hit go, nothing happened. The next one is a fade cue, which it does what it says it does. Just drag it on in. Now the two things you need to do to get a fade cue working are select the cue that it's going to fade and drag it on it. So now you see the target is that. The second thing you need to do is choose the level that it's going to fade it to. So right, its default is to be at negative infinity, but you see it's grayed out. So we have to click on it, and there we go. So now that cue is ready to go. 
what this means is the action is five, so that means it's going to fade for five seconds from its current level down to negative 59. Now, you could bring it down to negative infinity, but typically I think that is too low for a fade because it'll make it fade very fast. You want, you want to just keep it around 59 or 60, negative 59 or 60, and that's good. Now, if you want it to fit, if you want it to stop playing it at the end, just hit stop target when done. It's that simple. Now, fade cues can also go up. Let's say this song started at a low level, like 30, and for some reason during part of the scene you want it to get louder. So you come over here, you hit maybe 10, uncheck that, and so so it's starting lower now. Hit and it's getting louder. Simple enough. And then if you wanted to, you could add in another fade cue, direct it there, have it fade out, and you don't need to put that cue again in the workspace, you just direct it. You could have, you could have a scene where you have, you know, 20 different fade cues that all point to the same um, audio cue. It does get a little hairy, though, after a while, so be careful. Make sure you test it. Uh, to change the fade time, you can either just click here in action and replace it, type it in. It's that simple. Or you can come over to curve shape and settings and duration is the same thing. The other thing is fade type, absolute or relative. Absolute is chosen right now for this particular one. That means that it is going to bring it to negative 10 decibels no matter what that cue is set to. If you chose relative, then that means it's going to bring it to negative 10 from where it is. And so right now it's at negative 30, so that means it's actually going to bring it down to negative 40. So say you want to play several cues together. All you do is drag them all into the group cue. Oops, see, I missed with that one. You want to drag it up into it so that the group cue is highlighted and then you see that line with the ball at the end to show you that it's dropping it in individually rather than uh, replacing a cue. All right, so now we have three audio cues within this group cue. A group cue can function in several different ways. The way it is now, the default, is fire first cue, fire first child, which means the first cue there, and enter into group. So if I hit play or go, it's just going to play this first one. And it's waiting on me to hit go again to do the other one. Uh, now, if I wanted all these to go at the same time, I could just hit arrows. These arrows mean play the next cue at the same time. So now they will all go. <laughs> right? Uh, but there's an easier way to do that. So I'm going to undo this. This up here, this arrow, is always going to be on the same line as a group cue and it's set this way. You can't change it, so don't let that confuse you. If I wanted them all to go at the same time, the easiest way to do that is to change it to fire all children simultaneously. Now you see the box changed to green, and when I hit go, <laughs> they all go at the same time without me doing any arrows over here. All right, now, what if I want them all to go at the same time, but not exactly. I want one to wait like five seconds. Let's say I want the bell to happen five seconds after everything else. All you do is come to pre-wait, double-click, hit five, there you go. You see here it's waiting, the other two have started, and ding. So that's pretty easy. You can, you can stagger them however you want. Um, now let's say a slightly different scenario. You want the bell to ring after the tittering audience has finished. The best way to do that would be to change it back to the first way we had it. Make sure that the bell is after the one it's supposed to follow. 
We'll click the arrow here to tell it to play it at the same time, the tittering audience as the horror soundscape. Then we'll click this sec a second time, and you have the arrow with the circle on top. That means once this cue has finished, it's going to play the next one. And what we're going to do here is go to settings for the tittering audience. And this is a 15 second cue, but I'm going to make it so it lasts only about three seconds. All right, so we go play it. <laughs> there we go. In uh, a situation where you have pre-show music or intermission music where you want uh, songs to automatically follow each other, this is what you would use at the end of each song. There's a couple extra cues that you might want to know, and I'll just show you because they're kind of cool. I'm going to show you stop, pause, and start, which are variations on fade cues, but without a fade time. Stop does what it says. It stops the cue without any fade, just like that. And all you do is click on the thing you want to stop, drag it, and drop it. And go. There you go. That's very simple. Now I'm going to delete that. Pause does the same thing, except it doesn't stop the cue. It pauses it. You might have guessed that. All right, and you'll see when I go over, it has the pause thing. So this is still ready to go, but it's paused. Now, the only reason you would want to use that is if you're going to start it up again in the same spot, right? So you drag in a start cue, drag the cue it's starting on top of it, and there you go. And it starts it at the, at the same spot it was paused. And this can come in handy in certain situations in a show. All right, well, I hope this has been a helpful tutorial and that uh, now you feel confident to go ahead and do the sound design for your show. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section uh, or if you have any specific tutorials you'd like me to tackle. Of course, you see there are many cues over here that I didn't even touch. They are all useful, and uh, uh, they're also very specialized. So you, you don't need them all right now. You're good. You're good to go. All right, this has been Tutorial Joe, and uh, I'll see you around.